Uh, good evening. My name is Hiroshi Yasuda, Hiroshima University, Japan. I've contributed to the work of Working Group 11 for a uh, high energy radiation field for more than 10 years and also joined occasionally discussions related to retrospective dosimetry in Working Group 10. I'm very pleased and honored having a chance of giving a lecture this time for the Irados Winter School. I appreciate the organizer of the school and the colleagues of Working Group 11, particularly uh, Marco Carasana, Andre Ploc, uh, François Trompier, and Jean-François de Potria Depot for their encouragement. From now, I'm talking about possible radiological effects of space radiation exposure on the reproductive system and the fetal development of astronauts involved in future interplanetary space missions. My talk can be separated to two topics. The former one is about possible space radiation exposure and its biological effects in future interplanetary missions. And the latter one is about re relative biological effectiveness, so-called RBE, of high LUT particles of space radiation, focusing on the reproductive system and the embryonic and fetal development. So let me start the first topic, possible space radiation exposure and the biological effects in long-term interplanetary missions. As you might know, there are already concrete plans of deep space exploration in some countries. In United States, NASA has a plan composed of three phases. The first phase is mission to the moon and the uh, second phase is to construct uh, an operational system for the Mars mission. And the third phase is a journey to the Mars system. The period of a mission in the first or second phases is expected to be few months. It would never exceed one year anyways. In these phases, the astronaut would construct some facilities on the lunar surface to harvest some precious elements, such as uh, helium and oxygen, from the lunar soil, and also construct an operational base for the next phase mission to the Mars system. In the third phase for the Mars mission, the period of the mission would be much longer. In the plan of NASA, it would take uh, 2.5 years about six months each to for forward and backward flight and about 500 days more for exploration on the Mars surface. In those interplanetary missions, one of the highest concerns is space radiation exposure and that risk on the health. In the outer space, we cannot avoid being exposed to, be, to the energetic nuclei, such as protons, helium ions, etc., and uh, those secondary radiations produced by those uh, primary particles, such as neutrons. Beyond the Earth's magnetosphere, the major source of radio space radiation is galactic cosmic rays, so-called GCR that are composed of high-energy charged particles, such as protons and heavier ions, including uh, helium carbon ions. The GCR particles have a broad range of energy, up to 10, GE, 10 GeV per nucleus. It's very energetic. But on the ground, even at the aviation altitude, we are protected well by the thick atmosphere so we don't need to worry about such exposure. And it's an energetic particle of GCR, uh, mainly a proton, strikes uh, the atom nucleus in, in the air and, uh, and produces many hadrons, such as pions, neutrons, etc. Those hadrons also produces necessary radiation, uh, secondary radiations 
and make an extensive cascade of ionizing radiations. Most of them, however, do not reach the ground. While in the outer space, the GCR particles could easily enter the spacecraft and then the body of an astronaut. As a result, their radiation doses uh, during a space mission uh, could be significantly higher than those on the ground. Uh, this table shows the assessed bone marrow dose rates uh, received by the astronauts who are involved in the low Earth orbit LEO missions performed by NASA in the 20th century. Uh, you can see that daily absorbed dose was in the range of 0.2 to 2 milligray per day. Uh, this level is uh, comparable with the yearly absorbed dose on the ground. I should note that uh, these dose records of the LVE emissions uh, do not involve the contribution of a sol solar particle event so-called SPE. The SPE emits a huge amount of particles, mainly protons, accelerated by a solar flare or coronal mass ejection in a short time. In future uh, interplanetary missions that we will go beyond the Earth's magnetosphere, the SPE particles could bring a severely high dose exposure to the astronauts. Uh, this graph shows uh, predicted doses of selected organs as functions of the thickness of aluminum shielding uh, for a hy hypothetical SPE, uh, which is comparable to the largest SPE uh, known as the Carrington event. It was estimated that the skin dose and the island dose in the interplanetary space environment could reach 10 gray equivalent under a thin shielding, uh, like a space suit used for extra vehicle activities. Uh, even the bone marrow dose could exceed one gray equivalent. It's significant. So these data suggest that effective shielding will be crucially important for protecting the astronauts from the radiation hazard in future missions. Actually, uh, space agencies, NASA and ESA and JAXA, are responsible for keeping the individual doses of astronauts below the dose limits established by the authorities. Uh, it's enotherapy in this case. Uh, this table shows the recommended dose limits of deterministic effects for LEO astronauts. For the period of whole carrier, uh, the dose limits of islands is given as 4 gray equivalent and the limit of skin is 6 gray equivalent. The limit of bone marrow uh, was significantly smaller, that is 0 0.5 gray for one ear, uh, because uh, this organ is very radiosensitive. So here in my talk, I'd like to emphasize that the uh, effects of space radiation exposure on the reproductive potentials of astronauts have not yet been considered by those authorities. Uh, this is might be this might be reasonable for the early emissions since the dose levels are quite low anyways. But in future long-term interplanetary missions that will take more than two days, I think that uh, this matter will have a priority. It is natural to select a young couple of male and female astronauts in such a long mission so that they could enjoy the long journey, like a honeymoon, literally. In such a situation, uh, we cannot help but be concerned about the effect of space radiation exposure on their reproductive functions and embryonic or fetal development. Uh, this table shows the threshold doses of acute exposure for 1% incidence of uh, sterility for testes and ovaries after whole body gamma ray exposures. According to these data, uh, it would be unavoidable 
for male astronauts to have a temporal sterility because the threshold dose is quite low. Uh, female astronauts might also have sterility due to the additional exposure from a large SPE. Regarding the embryonic fetal development, the threshold doses on embryo lethality and those for malformations are relatively uh, low, small values. So I'm afraid to say that uh, it would be very difficult to achieve their healthy growth, embryonic or fetal growth, in the interplanetary space environment. However, uh, those threshold data were given for low LED radiations, such as gamma rays and or X-rays. In the outer space, the astronauts will be exposed mainly to high LED particles, such as heavy charged particles and the neutrons. In the previous figure, as shown here, on the predicted SP dose, the dose was given as gray equivalent, which was the the RB weighted observed dose. Then the value of RB, which is given as 1.5 here, we need to confirm that this RB values appropriate for the reproductive system or embryonic uh, or fetal development before talking about uh, the concrete plan of the interplanetary mission. So the question is, is this RV value appropriate for the reproductive system or embryonic or fetal development? So let's move on to the second topic, relative biological effectiveness, RBE, of high LED particles with regard to the reproductive potential. As you know, uh, there are several types of ionizing radiations that have different qualities in regard to the energy transfer patterns to the material. This figure shows the illustrated patterns of energy transfer to human cells of three radiations, uh, one MeV gamma rays, uh, one MeV neutron, and one GeV uh, ion. So you can see the gamma rays or Compton electrons give the energy to the tissue very uniformly. But uh, the first neutron, or recorded proton, deposits the energy along the track of the recorded proton. So in case of a high energy ion, the energy deposition is very restricted to the path of the track. So the deposition density, ionization density is quite high. Such a different pattern of uh, energy transfer is generally evaluated with the linear energy transfer, so-called the LET. So the LET is defined as the energy transferred from a radiation to the material per unit length of the track. Then a, a higher LET particle could cause more complex damage of DNA and thus induce a severe uh, biological effect with the unit dose. The relative biological effectiveness, RBE, is defined as the ratio of the dose of a high LED radiation in respect to that of a reference radiation, uh, usually gamma rays or X-rays, uh, required by those uh, radiations to cause the same level of biological effect. Uh, this definition is expressed with equation one here. Then in a mixed field of low LET, in high LED particles, uh, the total absorbed dose is calculated as the sum of the dose of the low LED radiations and RB weighted dose of the high LED particles. So in general, the LED dependency of RB can be shown with the curves shown here, though the level of RB values could change depending on various factors. The RB value would be almost unity up to around 10 keV per micrometer of LET, and then increase with LET up to around 100 keV per micrometer uh, 
and then decrease with the LET, uh, probably because the lowering efficiency in uh, damaging DNA. So let me explain more about the uh, meaning of RBE using a graph. So you have a uh, dose LL here as the absorbed dose of low LET reference radiation for a certain level of uh, severity. While uh, you can obtain dose HL here as the dose of high LET particles for the same level of severity. Then RBE can be calculated as a ratio of DLL to DHL. We should be careful because uh, the RB value can change, change depending on the dose rate, uh, particularly the dose rate of the low LET reference radiation. So if you did experiment uh, of the low LET radiation with a higher dose rate, the curve would shift to the left. As a result, the RB value would be smaller. The RB value also changes depending on the severity in respect. In this graph, uh, you focus on the higher damage, uh, the RB value would be smaller, as you can see. Uh, let me repeat that. Uh, even for the same combination of two radiations, high LET radiation and the reference radiation, the RB value could considerably change due to the conditions such as targeted tissue or organ, biological endpoint in respect, ionizing, ionization density of the particle, and the dose rate, etc. Okay, so with this uh, background information, let's look at the reported RBE values regarding reproductive potential. Uh, first, uh, let me show the data for male reproductive organ, that is testis. Uh, this table shows RB values, uh, selected heavy ions and neutrons for spermatogrin killing in mice. Uh, you can see relatively low RB values, less than 3 for energetic heavy ions, while uh, higher values were seen for neutrons. Uh, next organ is the female reproductive organ, uh, ovary. This table shows RV values of selected uh, heavy ions and neutrons for oocyte killing in mice. It should be noted that uh, low RB values around 0.4 were observed, which implies a different mechanism of radiological response of ovary compared to other organs. Uh, the next table shows the RB values of uh, protons and the selected heavy ions for embryonic or fetal development. Uh, generally lower uh, RB values, uh, less than 2, were uh, obtained for those uh, ions. One exception is for iron, but uh, in this experiment, the medaca fish was used, so I think uh, the mechanism of the biological mechanism uh, was different. The last table shows the REB values of neutrons for embryonic or fetal development. So you can see a higher, significantly higher value of RBE for those neutrons uh, compared to those for heavy ions. So uh, according to this data, we could roughly say that the RB value of 1.5 for space radiation is appropriate for heavy charged particles. But uh, I'm afraid that uh, it would underestimate the effect for neutrons. The high values of neutrons suggest that uh, we need to make the shielding design the most carefully for the astronauts who would stay long on the Moon or Mars. Uh, 
This illustration shows the uh, typical habitat structure where they would probably stay. Uh, the in inside of the structure would be like this. So such a structure is expected to work well to shield the primary ions, uh, mainly protons, okay. but nuclear reactions uh, like this of those uh, ions would produce many secondary radiations, including neutrons. So uh, it is concerned that the RB weighted dose would not be reduced so effectively with this structure. Uh, if so, we might need to add additional shielding of a hydrogen rich material like polyethylene to stop neutrons. So this issue should be investigated in more detail and uh, solved in the planning process of the uh, first interplanetary mission. So let me summarize my talk. Uh, the deterministic effects of space radiation exposure on the reproductive potentials have not yet been considered in the current framework of radiological protection for astronauts, but uh, I think this issue would be carefully considered in the planning process of future interplanetary missions. In parallel, we need to recognize that the, uh, the RB values employed for high T particles of space radiation are not uh, stable. They could notably change depending on some conditions such as particle energies and dose rates as well as biological endpoints in respect. Then it is desirable to perform uh, more intensive studies for achieving selection of the most appropriate RB values in correspondence to uh, possible exposure scenarios during the interplanetary mission. That's all. Thank you for your attention.